Hello and welcome to the show. I am Kachi Ophia, your host for the next hour of all. And when I say all, I mean every single entertaining spectacle in the world of showbiz. Because of course, this is a Rise 360. Now we have put together an amazing show for you like we always do. So let me waste no time in letting you know what's coming up today on Arise 360. First, I'll be tripping through the continents as I give you my daily review of the top stories from around the world. And then I'll be taking a look at the music industry and telling you what's been happening with your favorite music makers. Also on the show, I will be giving you our theatrical and artistic recommendations when we talk arts and culture. And finally, I will be talking to a RISE correspondent, Judita De Silva, in London when we discuss the latest in film and television. All that and so much more right here on Arise 360. Now, before we get into all that, let's start with the top global stories as we take a look at what's happened in a day around the world. Now, this story is a definite bombshell. Starting off in America, Ellen DeGeneres, you know, our favorite TV host, yes, is considering ending her run on daytime talk. Now, DeGeneres told the New York Times in a new interview that she's milling what to do once her contract comes to an end in 2020. So she renewed her deal in 2016, but had been close to declining the offer that would have kept her in front of daytime audiences through season 17. Now, the comedian and host reportedly is torn between advice given to her from two significant people in her life. We're talking about her brother on one hand and her wife, actress Portia de Rossi. Now, The Ellen DeGeneres Show has won 57 daytime Emmys since its debut in 2003. Now, let's stay in America, where U.S. President Donald Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, delivered a blistering attack on his former boss as he was sentenced to three years in prison on Wednesday. Now, this was for multiple crimes. So, Michael Cohen said it was his duty to cover up his dirty deeds as he pleaded for leniency before U.S. District Judge William H. Pauley III. Now, he said he was taking responsibility for his crimes, including those implicating the President of the United States of America. Cohen's lawyers have asked for no jail time after he pleaded guilty to tax evasion, making false statements to a financial institution, illegal campaign contributions, and making false statements to Congress. But it wasn't that nice, you know, it didn't go so well. Judge Pauly sentenced Cohen to three years in prison. Well, let's go over to Latin America, where it's more about ballet and not prison time. So for Carlos Acosta, the son of a black truck driver in communist-run Cuba, overcoming poverty, prejudice, and politics to become a global ballet legend, write a best-selling memoir, and create his own dance company just wasn't enough. So the Cuban dancer, Carlos Acosta, gave an interview as he attends the film premiere for Yuli. Now, what is Yuli? It is a biopic about his life. This happened during Havana's International Film Festival in Cuba. The 45-year-old who won fame as a teen for his athleticism and viciousity this week presented a movie about his rags to riches story at the festival. And he said that this story moved audiences and of course every single person was laughing, crying, and of course the applause was just thunderous. So in Asia, standing at least a foot taller than Aquafina, Lavan Cox, and the Crazy Rich Asians co-star read the 25th Screen Actors Guild Awards nominations. Now, this movie, A Star is Born, is breaking records more than we even expected because Bradley Cooper's movie was in the lead with four nods, including Best Ensemble. So here's how it all went down. The other nominees for the group's top awards, Best Ensemble, were Black Panther, 
Bohemian Rhapsody, Black Klansmen, not surprising, and Crazy Rich Asians. So Aquafina, who had the unusual pleasure of announcing the hit romantic comedies ensemble, was totally surprised at the movie's nomination. Now, she didn't know this, so when she heard, or rather saw the name, it came as a shock to her. The SAG Awards will be held on the 27th of January 2019, and this year's show will honor Alan Alda with the Screen Actors Guild Life Achievement Award. What did I tell you? Laverne told me that, th that you can only have your first time once, or twice, or thrice. I say thrice. And also that it's, it's just going to be special and just have fun, which is, which is true. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have fun. I already booked my entire styling team. We're putting together a mood board. I'm going to wear a wedding dress. She taught me well. Here comes Aquafina. Okay, now let's go over to Australia, where Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth are just wonderful together. So Miley Cyrus has had to deal with the lot in the past few weeks. Yes, the loss of her home and instruments worth $10,000 to be precise. Now she is telling us a little special something about, you know, Liam Hemsworth. So the 26-year-old singer stopped by Sirius XM's Howard Stern show on Wednesday and revealed what term, not boyfriend or fiance, that she uses for her long time on and off boo. So she referred to him as her partner. Yes, she called him, or rather she calls him her survival partner now. Now, although Miley Cyrus revealed that Hemsworth thinks the term is not romantic, she has learned that it certainly is. Now, this was especially true during the Malibu fires, and Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth have been talking about, you know, weddings and kids, according to an inside source. So let's go over to Europe now. Juliette Binoche will be the jury president at this winter's Berlin International Film Festival. Absolutely. So organizers of the festival announced on Tuesday that the French actress will lead the jury that awards the Golden Bear and other top awards at the 2019 event, which would run from February 7th to February 17th. There was no immediate word on who will join her on the jury, but we're keeping our ears pinned. So Binoche said in a statement that she will embrace her task with joy and care, and this winter's event is the last Berlin nail under the longtime festival director, Dieter Koslik. The festival with, will open with the premiere of Danish director Lone Scherfig's The Kindness of Strangers. And over in the UK, Britain's Prince Charles teamed up with his son, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, on Wednesday to talk about youth violence. So amazing. Now, the British royals met with actor Tom Hardy, recording artist Tiny Temper, and England soccer manager Gareth Southgate at Clarence House in London to discuss ways of tackling knife crime in Britain. So Hardy, Temper, and Southgate attended the meeting as ambassadors of the Prince's Trust. We can't wait to find out everything that was discussed in that event. Now, talking about something that has been discussed a lot now, it's happening in India. So it's the fact that a string of Bollywood stars, you know, famous politicians and other celebrities poured into the 27-story Ambani residence for the marriage of their kids. Yes, the two billionaire families, and this happened on Wednesday. So the power-packed guest list included Indian actors Hamir Khan, Ashwarya Rai, Abhishek Bachchan, Rajini Kant, and former Indian finance minister P. Chidambaram. Now, the groom, Anand Paramal, is the relative pauper, yes, in quotes. His father, industrialist Ajay Paramal, is thought to be worth, you know, 10 billion US dollars, while Indian weddings are famously elaborate, driving many families into debt with expectations that they invite hundreds or thousands of people and arrange in professional song and dance shows. It is highly unlikely it will be the case in this situation. But let's get to Africa finally. Words currently on the lips of music pundits 
is that Nigerian pop musician David O has been reportedly declared wanted in Gambia. Now, this is for allegedly assaulting one Kenny Ibuke, a celebrity photographer who came to cover his recent music concert. So, David O will be risking prison sentence for recently threatening the life of the celebrity blogger. Now, uh, because the blogger accused him of buying YouTube views for his latest song, Wonder Woman. So, a case of assault reported against him at the Kololi police station in Gambia has been filed. But in other news, looking at a data two in that video, a lot of people are loving this video to Wonder Woman. It featured David O's baby mamas and, of course, other amazing women in the industry. And also in Africa, David O's assurance and Whiskey's fever and Olamide's science student are the most searched songs and top trending songs in Nigeria for 2018. So this is according to the Google top trending songs of 2018 list released also on Wednesday. So David O had four entries on the list of most searched songs by Nigerians in 2018, while Whiskit had three and Olamide earned two. Not so bad. So Tina Savage and Whiskid, you know, got people talking with the fever visuals. And so far, it has garnered over 11 million views on YouTube. Assurance, yes, told the story of David O on holiday with his girlfriend and muse for the song Chioma, yes. And of course, that poor she got her for her birthday made everyone ask about their own assurance. It's garnered over 30 million views. And then Science Student by Olamide had over 10 million views. So congratulations to all of them. Well, that's our bit from around the world. How about we go on a really, really short break right about now. But stay tuned to the show because coming up, I will be bringing you all the latest music news as well as what stories have been trending on social media. Don't go away. Welcome back to Arise 360. I'm your host, Kachi Ophia. So it is time to find out what's been going on in the crazy lives of our favorite singers and rappers in today's music news. So a new Netflix documentary is set to debut over the Christmas holidays. And it might offer answers to the millions of fans on the late DJ Avicii, who died unexpectedly six months ago. So, Levan Sikurishvili spent four years documenting the non-stop jet-setting life of the one, I mean, one of the biggest DJs in the world. So, Levan himself to this day has no idea what led to Avicii's death. But his film is a haunting retrospective that might offer some clues. In the movie, Levin captured several moments when the superstar DJ complained of fatigue and stress, and at one point he even said that his relentless storing schedule would kill him. The documentary is titled Avicii, True Stories, and it will be available on Netflix from December 28th. Well, rap legend LL Cool J and supermodel Chrissy Teigen will be back on our screens, yes. Now, this will be happening in the new year for season five of their popular TV show, Lip Sync Battle. And they have a star-studded lineup of guests already. So, celebrities like Tenise Champion, Serena Williams, and music legend Mariah Carey will be making a cameo on the music show, which sees famous stars lip sync to the hit songs of their favorite artists. The new trailer was released just last night and revealed that the new season will even feature a guest appearance from Chris's husband, singer John Legend, and of course, their adorable baby daughter Luna, who clearly only cared about the singing with Big Bird from Sesame Street, yes, who will also be making an appearance. Well, take a look. My friend Elmo over here in a cake. We love Big Bird. This has been a show that we'll be talking about for a long time. This is the loudest I have ever seen this house. Let's get it. Ooh, 
we cannot wait. So Kanye West had, or rather to say, has had a crazy year, and he probably thought that nothing else was going to happen. Even we, we thought nothing else was going to happen either, until he met a talking tree. So the 41-year-old rapper was visiting the Night Garden at the Fairchild Tropical Botanical Garden yesterday in Miami, Florida. One of the attractions was a computer-generated tree, complete with facial features and interactive ability. When Kanye stopped by, the tree took the chance to tease the rap star a little and even asked if Kanye could give him a pair of his famous Yeezy shoes, or rather, a size tree. Well, Kanye enjoyed himself so much, he shared the funny moment on Twitter. Take a look. This is one of them. Mm -hmm. Which are you famous for? Mm. Everything. <laughs> You're famous for everything. Let me ask you a question, Kanye. It's been plaguing my mind for a while. Do you make your Yeezys in size tree? <laughs> I've been looking for a pair, but no one has them. Aw, Kanye, please make him a pair. Well, BBC Radio 1 in the UK has also revealed their A-list lineup of hosts for their annual Christmas Day special. And people are getting very excited about two hosts in particular. So K-pop megastars BTS will be joining the Radio 1 from 12 noon on Christmas Day to share their favorite Christmas songs. But if that is not enough to get you excited, British girl group Little Mix will be in control of the radio station from 10 a.m. sharing their favorite festive ballads before handing over to the BTS boys who will also have the pleasure of trying out some traditional British Christmas food for the first time. Now, we're not sure how it will measure up to Korean cuisine, but we're sure the boys will get struck in. And even when he is not working, his music is working for him. Exactly. I guess that's just how life is when you are as talented as Ed Sheeran. So the British singer has been announced as the most streamed artist in the history of music streaming service, Spotify. So his 2017 hit song, Shape of You, from his album Divide, became the first song to reach 2 billion streams this is in addition to going to the number one spot on the music charts of dozens of countries around the world in 2017. An official video was released by Spotify and social media to confirm Ed Sheeran's achievements. And Ed also posted a message on his own Instagram to thank the world for helping him make history. Well, we do love you, Ed Sheeran, we do. So it is from music to social media now as we take a look at what every single person has been talking about online. So let's talk what's trending. Now, to break down the hottest social media stories, we have a hot lady. Yes, I am now joined by a rice correspondent, Judita De Silva, who is at our studios in London. Hi, Judita. Oh, that dress is going to make me cry. Oh, Why is that dress so beautiful? Thank you. It's so beautiful. I hope I'm not strobing on the camera or oh, anything. No, you're not. <laughs> you are you. just like gliding on the camera, literally. Well, let me try and take my oh, eyes away from that you. dress and let's talk about what's been trending. So, I hear people are talking about former One Direction okay. singer Zayn Malik, and he had a big music party in New York last night. So, what was that about? Okay, so he's re he's about to release his sophomore album, which is called Icarus Falls, and that's out tomorrow, Friday. Um, on Tuesday, he released the first song, which is There You Are, and he also released the album artwork. But um, last night, he had this big party in New York City, which is a listening party, and record companies tend to do this. It's kind of a tradition that when you've got a new album coming out, a few of your fans get special tickets to a venue, and they get a pre-listening party to before you release the album. It gives you a kind of gauge of what, what 
what's going to be the next single, which songs people are really attracted to, what resonates with your audience. But this is a really big deal for Zayn Malik because if you remember that when he released his first solo album after he left the big band One Direction, it was he had the breakout single Pillow Talk. He was dating he's dating supermodel Gigi Hadid. He then admitted that he kept on canceling lots of shows because he suffers from chronic anxiety. So on social media, everybody's been so excited about this because they thought it was an album that would never come because he's just so scared of performing. So people were congratulating him and saying they were proud of him for getting over his anxiety and putting out the album, and the feedback has been great so far. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, now, I'm really curious about this one because clearly this is his second album. Zayn Malik is, you know, pushing really hard in this industry. So do you think maybe we're about to see another Fifth Harmony kind of situation where there's one member of the group that is really, really pushing really hard and everybody is just so focused on that person? Because looking at the other members of One Direction, Liam Payne, you know, um, Harry Styles, every other part of the group, it doesn't look like they are as, you know hard hitting as Zayn Malik. So do you think we're about to see that kind of situation again? I think that you're actually right because if you look at um, the dynamic of things in Fifth Harmony when Camila Cabello left, Camila is Cuban and she went the Cuban route and started re releasing Latin music and that's been what's t taken off for her. The key about Zayn Malik is that everybody else on the, in One Direction was white. He was the only ethnic minority. When he, he was always reclusive and when he went solo, Pillow Talk was such a massive single. But the reason it was good is because his choice of producers, the kinds of songs he does, he says he never would have been able to do in One Direction. Their sound was different. He's not a pop guy. He's kind of like an alternative urban guy. So he collaborates with those kinds of artists and his music sounds very mature, very current and very dynamic. And I think that you're right when you're saying that he might be the breakout star because so far his last album did well. The anticipation for his new album is ripe. The only other guy who could have challenged him was Harry Styles, who was the most popular member of the group. Yeah. But Harry Styles' solo album, he, he had award nominations and it was well received, but he hasn't captured the kind of um, musical recognition that Z Zayn Malik is actually doing because people always saw Harry Sp Styles as the pretty boy who dated a lot of famous women. Yeah. But Zayn has just been all about the music or he stays at home and he stays quiet. So people respect that about him. Amazing. So let's talk about another superstar talking about Miley Cyrus. Now, she is getting social media buzzing and this time it is not about our music so what is going on there <laughs> Yeah, it seems like the girl who was once Hannah Montana is going back to her roots. So what has happened is um, she was doing an interview on the Howard Stern radio show in America because she's currently promoting her song with Mark Ronson. And she said that she confirmed she's going to be appearing in season the next season of the critically acclaimed Netflix series Black Mirror. And if you know about the series, it's very dark and twisted. So it's, such, it's wildly away from how everybody sees Miley Cyrus. So she said she's very excited for people to watch it. So people are curious to see if she has the acting chops to do it. Because remember that she also did Crisis in Six Scenes, which was directed by Woody Allen over on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. And she's appeared in Two and a Half Men. So she can act, but can she act the kind of acting that really flourishes in a series that's as gritty and dramatically accomplished as um, Black Mirror? So people are quite curious to see this, but it's a big thing that has everyone buzzing because it's a step out of her comfort zone for Miley Cyrus. Okay, so now we've seen Miley Cyrus, you know, um, graduate from different phases, from the Hannah Montana, you know, pretty girl look, to her phase where she was just naked all over yeah. the place and going crazy and her hair and everything. She has really, really evolved over time. <laughs> now, looking at Black Mirror, it's not the usual series where every story is sequential. It's something where you have individual stories for each episode. So do you think perhaps they might just create something that fits Miley's personality to make it a bit easier? Or do you think that, you know, she might just be able to fit into any box that she has been put in. Seeing as, you know, she's really evolved dramatically. 
Those are, that's really a, the um, billion dollar question because the key about Black Mirror is why is it, it is successful. It's written by this comedian satirist named Charles, Charlie Brooker. And he's very big in the UK because he's cutting, he's gritty, and he, he provides commentary on aspects of human nature and the human condition. And that's been manifested in this runaway success that's Black Mirror. But the key about Charlie Brooker, because he writes it himself with his co-writer, he doesn't adapt to stars. Stars want to come on his show because his scripts challenge them, his stories challenge them. So if he's going to have Miley Cyrus in one of his episodes, he's going to put her in a, scene, in a situation we have never seen her in before, and it's going to be up to her to rise to the game. And if she says she's excited to let us see it, she probably feels that she's done a good job. But as I say, the jury is out, and then the, the crowd will decide once we see it. But we don't yet have a release date for season five. But once we do, I will let you know. Please do. So Disney is all about creating the buzz and they're at it again, yes. And this time it's about one of their shows for their streaming service coming next year. So what is it? Okay, it's a new series that they announced on Twitter just yesterday. It's called Onward, but what everyone's buzzing about on social media is the actual cast because it's got to be an animated series, but the voices, and it's from Disney Pixar Animations that gave us Monsters, uh, Monsters Inc. The director of Monsters University, Mo Monsters University, excuse me, Dean Scanlon, is going to be directing this, and it's going to star two of the Avengers, which is um, Chris Pratt and Tom Holland, who's Spider-Man, as well as multi-Emmy award-winning Julia Louis-Dreyfus, who's the um, actress from Veep, and also Oscar-winning actress Octavia Spencer. So the cast wow. is incredible. And so everyone's kind of got a lot of anticipation for this. But it, the project was originally announced at the D23 conference last year, which is when Disney rolls out all their plans for the future years. But it was on hold and kind of shifting, and then they changed the title to Onward, signed this amazing cast, and now we know it's going to be coming out on March 6, 2020. March 6th, 2020. All right, we'll definitely keep that in mind. Well, Judita, we're loving you without the collotage, <laughs> and we cannot wait to have you back again on film and TV. So thank you for now. My pleasure. Well, that's all from Judita for now, but she will be back later on in the show to discuss film and TV with me. So stay tuned and don't miss it. All right, now it's time for another quick break, but do not go away because coming up, I'll have my daily arts and culture review, and there's a lot of great things to show you. So keep it here on Arise 360. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Arise 360. I am Kachi Ophia. So it's now time for me to show you what's been grabbing everyone's attention over the last 24 hours in the world of arts and culture. <laughs> Now, the Royal Ballet has presented its sparkling production of Petipa and Gorksky's exuberant classic, Don Quixote. Now, set in romantic Spain, the plot unfolds as the love between two characters, Kitri and Basilio, is challenged by the fruitless attempts of Kitri's father to engineer a more lucrative march for his daughter. Now, the excitement, color, and wit of this masterpiece is sure to thrill the audience at the Royal Opera House, and the outstanding displays of dazzling choreography and, and dancing are highlighted by the production's irresistible music. And then the 80s, 90s, and 2000s are officially fashion's favorite decades, at least according to Google. Well, in the company's yearly study of the most trending searches, the top four fashion searches were 1980s fashion, grunge fashion, 1990s fashion, and 2000s fashion. So compared to last year, the retro revival shows can, you know, be seen as would have increased influence of the runways on mainstream fashion searches. Now, this was the year Versace's reissues arrived in stores. Prada brought back its iconic nylon linea rosa, and Marc Jacobs remade his infamous grunge collection. Well, we love those eras too. And after a very successful run on Broadway, the Book of Mormon is thrilling audiences at London's West End. So it's a coming of age story of two young, extremely likable Mormons on their mission to spread the word of God in Uganda. 
Critics say it is an exceptional, visionary, and all-rounding, entertaining musical piece. With numerous Tony Awards, enthusiastic reviews worldwide, and sold-out shows in Salt Lake City, the Mormon capital of the U.S., it will likely be a bestseller during its season. And the Metropolitan Museum of Modern Art is carrying out a major retrospective on a key figure of the Chicago Black Renaissance for the first time in 30 years. Now, throughout his career, Charles White rejected the dominant images of African Americans in circulation, exercising his artistry as a tool for reclaiming the narrative of black culture within American history. His artworks took many forms over the years, spanning paintings, drawings, and public art, and were powerful enough to carry the torch of the black Chicago Renaissance. And of course, speak across the many binaries of the civil rights movement. The exhibition travels to three major cities in which White lived and worked, including Chicago, LA, and New York. And of course, it runs through to February next year. And the classic musical, Oklahoma, is coming back to Broadway, although in a form fans have never seen before. So, Daniel Fish's reconceived take on the musical set around the advent of Oklahoma's statehood will transfer to Broadway Circle in the Square Theatre next spring. The new take on the musical incorporates stripped-down versions of classic songs like Oh, What a Beautiful Morning, and uses moments of intense violence to uncover the darker themes lingering underneath. This revival comes 75 years after the original production of the Rogers and Hammerstein musical. And this year, Cher has been up to so much. So now, she got to attend the opening night of a Broadway musical about her life. And she was the main, you know, selling point for the new movie, Mamma Mia. So we're about to have a lot more of Cher in our lives. Yes, and we're not complaining. The actress and singer announced on Twitter that there's even more content heading our way in the form of a book she's writing about her life. She followed up with a biopic to follow, which we take to mean only one thing. A Cher movie is heading our way also. So the singer hasn't gone into details yet about the ventures, but one thing's for sure. 2019 is just going to be another share year again. So we're going to take a really short break, but stay tuned to Arise 360, because coming up, I will be talking to Jadita De Silva again, all about movies and television, and she's got even more award scoop to tell us, so don't go anywhere. Okay, next, you're still watching Arise 360. I am Kachi Ofia. So on Arise 360, we like to give, or no, we love to give you a helping hand with keeping track of what goes on in the music, or rather, movie business. So here is our daily look at film and television. And filling us in with the latest in film and TV is a Rice correspondent, again, Judita De Silva, who joins me now from our studios in London. Hi, Judita, great to have you back. So, as always, let's start with TV. The Disney Plus streaming service is getting people even more excited by announcing the new cast members of their upcoming series. So, please tell us, who are they? anticipation of Disney Plus, which is a streaming service that's coming out in 2019. This is their live action Star Wars series called The Mandalorian. We already know that the lead actor is going to be Pedro Pascal, who's the star of Narcos and also um, Game of Thrones. But what they've done is now they have announced more of the cast, which is going to include Giancarlo Esposito, who we know from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, as well as Werner Herzog, the director. And also we've got um, Carl 
Carl Weathers, who played Apollo Creed on Rocky. So everyone is very excited by, about that because the key to this um, Disney and Star Wars is that it plays to fandom and the, um, the fans like stuff like the guy from Rocky is going to be in it, the guy from Breaking Bad. So by pulling in people that already have a built-in audience, this spells great things for the show. But obviously this is Disney and they're playing their cards very close to their chest. We don't know any details about each character that they will be playing. All we do know is that the Mandalorian series is going to be set after the fall of the Empire, but before the rise of the New Order, and that's all they're giving us. Okay, so looking at the series right about now, yes, obviously they have given us just a little, but looking at the personalities of the cast they chose to infuse in this series, are we looking at maybe just the opposite of who they have been in? Because, I mean, they've all had blockbusters looking at Apollo Creed and the likes. So are we looking at the same type of, you know, personality they channeled in their respective movies in this same action? Or, you know, I mean, we're trying to just create something here just for viewers to hold. Yes, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, but the thing is that I think what, what this is clever about is that it plays into people's imagination. Because remember when the original Star Wars films came out, George Lu Lucas got a lot of um, backlash because something that set out in space, the possibilities are endless, but he had no black characters. And then he brought in Billy Dee Williams to play Lando Calrissian, that ended up being one of the favorite characters of the entire franchise. So now you have um, Carl Weathers, and people are thinking, is it going to be a character like Lando Calrissian? Who mm -hmm. knows? But they're playing on people's minds and also he's got these Latin characters coming in and remember in Rogue One we had um, a Latin character in um, Prince in the in the character that played it um, opposite the lead in Rogue One a Star Wars story so we've seen that by bringing in minorities they can really flourish in the Star Wars universe so by having these stars and already knowing their acting chops from the shows they already have done we know the acting is going to be great but letting people's imaginations do the work for you is the best kind of marketing you could ever use absolutely it's great marketing now we know Netflix has also announced a new TV project however it's not their tip type of entertainment now, is it? Yeah, because with Netflix, they kind of, we've seen they do entertainment, they do big budget, they're branching out into horror. But one thing that was an accidental gem for them was their true crime um, basically catalogue. What they've announced is that this came out on Twitter just last night. They're going to be doing a four-part series based on the notorious serial killer from the 70s, Ted Bundy. It's going to be called Conversations with the Killer, the Ted Bundy Tapes, and it's coming out in January 2019. Because remember when Netflix released the series How to Make a Murderer, that was a runaway success and the the fandom so spilled out into reality, the, um, crime, the criminal that it was based on ended up getting crowdfunded and crowd pressure into having his case reopened. So Netflix now realizes that this true crime genre is a really big thing. So if they invest in that, they can expand the girth of the kind of entertainment they offer on the platform. Interesting. Now, do you think maybe Netflix has managed to corner the, you know, market that is looking at the lives of very popular people? I mean, we spoke about the fact that they're trying to run a series on Selena. And then a while back, they mentioned something about Quincy Jones as well. So do you think they're just trying to corner that market before anybody even gets onto it? So it's like a Netflix thing. So if anybody else does it, it's like, oh, you're copying Netflix. I think you probably do work for Netflix, stop pretending, because you just, that's exactly right. So we know you work for Netflix. You're a spy at a rise for Netflix. But yeah, that's exactly it, because they, once something works, Netflix tries to corner the market because they know the competition in the streaming game is so fierce. And well, like I said, How to Make a Merger was such a um, runaway success. Their Latin series are doing so well. So starting to pick people that already have a fan base and then tell, them, tell the world the truth about their story. And the key with Netflix is that they always work very closely with the talent. So when you said Quincy Jones, the family of Selena Quintanilla, they're going to be involved with the production of it. So once you have them involved, it gives you provenance and it gives you credibility and then you've got the fan the viewership already built in so people who may not have had a Netflix subscription because they're fans of these people they're going to sign on to Netflix oh, such 
smart people walking in that place. But anyways, let's talk about movies now. You know, it is award season. Yes, there have been even more nominations for the 2019 awards show, the Screen Actors Guild Awards. And, you know, we would like to know who came out on top. Okay, so the screen act, like within all the awards, every they all play to different niches. The Golden Globes is the bridge between TV and television. Um, the Emmys is um, the bastion of television. Screen Actors Guild is kind of like actors for actors, critics for actors. So when people start seeing who wins the Screen Actor Guild, Actors Guild, you know who people respect in the industry. And A Star is Born, which was directed by actor Bradley Cooper, his directorial debut starring Lady Gaga. It was the, it had the most nominations. It had four nominations and so leads in the film category. In the TV category, it was Ozark on Netflix and The Marvelous Mrs. Mizell on Amazon Prime. But the key about this is that um, Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper and Sam Elliott all got nominated in their respective categories. And they also got nominated for Best Ensemble Cast. But it's going to be quite difficult to win because the, they'll be going up against Black Panther, Black Klansman, um, Bohemian Rhapsody, and Crazy Rich Asians. So nobody knows who it's going to go for. But people are pretty much thinking that if the Screen Actors Guild gives you that many nominations, you're going to walk away with something. And everybody's money is, is either on Bradley Cooper or Lady Gaga. Absolutely. Now, we spoke earlier about how this movie garnered some controversy because a lot of people were bothered by, uh, you know, Bradley Cooper's character's suicidal, you know, abilities. So now we're looking at all of these awards that it's getting. And do you think, you know how the other time you spoke about how sometimes they nominate to just give you some form of recognition? Do you think that may be looking at the fact that The Star is Born has so many nominations for this particular category? Yes, they might go away with something, but it might not be this one. Because, I mean, like you said, they have major competition. Black Klansmen, Crazy Rich Asians. When you talk about minorities, these are movies that literally just scream minority. You know, so do you think maybe they might get something, but maybe not just this particular, <laughs> this particular category? <laughs> See, this is, oh, this is a great thing about it, because with awards, it's all about egos. Just because everybody's expecting something, it doesn't mean they're going to do it. And the Screen Actors Guild is notorious for bucking trend and not doing what everyone expects. But the key about this is that the awards, the awards season is like running for president. It's a marathon, not a sprint, and it's a political campaign. Because you've got to shake the right hands, go to the right parties, and be people's friends. People like Bradley Cooper. They like him a lot. This is his first directorial. This is a directorial debut. He's been so nice about it. This star, a star is Born is a brand that has existed for decades and has been interpreted time and time from Judy Garland to Barbara Streisand. They like the film. And the fact that he did a good job, they like that. And also remember that this was a project that has been a long time in the making. Originally, it was going to be directed by Clint Eastwood. It was going to star John Legend and Alicia Keys. And it was going to star Beyonce. And it fell apart. He brought it home. So he's shown that he has the, he's got tenacity and he's got dedication and he's got ability. So the Screen Actors Guild, Hollywood likes him. He's a shoe in They like the project. You're a further shoe in And you're so gregarious and you're doing all the right things and saying all the right things. And remember, there's been no controversy around Bradley Cooper. He could walk away with it. Lady Gaga is a newbie, so it might be welcome to the industry, but just yeah, not yet. We have time. to wait and see. <laughs> okay, now, uh, speaking of awards, the Oscars yeah. still did not have a host, but I hear that Whoopi Goldberg just, you know, dropped a little name in the air. So please tell us about this one. <laughs> I love this because I think it's a great idea. So Whoopi Goldberg was um, discussing the whole controversy about Kevin Hart stepping down because of those tweets. And now they're thinking there might be no host. But then she said, why not get Ken Jeong? He's the actor from the Hangover movies, Crazy Rich Asians, Community. He's popular. He's funny. He's a comedian. He's an movie actor and a TV actor. She just said that also, especially in this year with a movie like Crazy Rich Asians, which we just talked about, he would be the first ever Asian American host of the Oscars. So you'd be breaking down boundaries, setting firsts, and he's good. He'd appeal to people. He's a comedian and a host, which is what they always go for. Because remember, Whoopi Goldberg has hosted the Oscars four times herself. And they always look for somebody who can do funny, but knows the business. Ken Jeong can do funny. He's an actor, so knows the business. So she says he's the perfect pedigree for a host, and it would be great to have those kinds of firsts, particularly in this year.
Okay, well, I do hope that they listen. So, Judita, now, we know <laughs> that you have, like, a bombshell. Psh, you're about to drop it on us. So, the final video <laughs> recommendation for today, what would that be? Oh my gosh, you're gonna love this. So, you know, this is the smartest move. It's being dropped in December, right before award season, so it's probably gonna do really well. Directed by Oscar-winning director um, Clint Eastwood. You remember him from Mystic River, Unforgiven. Um, he, this is about a very, an aging man who's a drug mule. And it's absolutely beautifully directed. It's coming out um, this month, so you can catch it soon. And it's called The Mule, and I really think you're going to absolutely adore this film. Oh. Need help, sir? Oh, uh, officer, hi. You need uh, help? Uh, no, no, I'm fine, thank you. What do you got there? Uh, well, pecans. I delivering pecans to my niece. And pecans? Here. Yeah, pecans. She makes the worst pecan pie you've ever tasted. I feel sorry for her husband, but, and I feel sorry for the pecans, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is the most important thing. Don't do what I did. I put work in front of family. I thought it was more important to be somebody out there than the damn failure I was in my own home. I was a terrible father. Terrible husband. Blew my chance. I didn't deserve forgiveness. This is the last one. So help me God. This is the last one. interesting well for now that's all from Judita de Silva and from us as well in Lagos that will be all so thank you so much for watching the show now remember that you can catch us every single weekday at 4 p.m. right here on the Arise News channel so until next time I remain your host Kachi Ophia and of course this right here is Arise 360 <laughs>